What did he say? I don't think you want to be promoting Rolf Harris, do you? No, I'm Cheska, this is Ben, and this is our little hitchhiker river. We've spent the last year travelling Europe in our self-built sprinter van Sophia, but new horizons are calling. In 2021, we'll be driving all the way to Cape Town, South Africa. Before we go, we're making some upgrades to Sophia to get her ready for those African roads. Subscribe and join us for the ride. Good morning from a beautiful winter's day. This week is our last full week on the van build before Christmas and New Year, so we are gonna make the most of it. We have got this massive sheet of plywood and we're gonna start ply lining the walls. And if you remember from last week, we've just got to finish framing the little vent window. So I know I said last week that we were gonna use the 3.6 mil ply to line the walls behind all the covers and everything, but I think it's a little bit too flim flimsy and we'd have to put more, um, more, more battens. battens. That's what I look for. <laughs> have to put more battens in just to hold it in. So we're going to go for the five mil ply, which is much thicker. What we're going to do once, because obviously weight, you know, with any van build, weight is like the most important thing to keep an eye on. So once we've put this, all the ply we've got and all the wood we've got where we want, taking the solar panels off. Um, we'll take it down to a weigh bridge, find out what the weight is, and then as we are adding stuff in, so like the underslung water tanks, um, any wood we're putting, we'll weigh it so that we'll know, you know, wet, you know roughly um, how much weight we're adding to the van. Okay, so if you remember from last week, we have to put some paint onto this window frame to hide a lot of the white that's visible. So here, this white surround is still gonna be visible when we've got the frame in, so I'm just gonna add some black paint just all around here and it obviously just helps seal it as well. So this is the stuff we're going to be using and we've actually bought this to use when we fit our underslung water tank um, for the brackets and stuff to help prevent rust um, so we thought we might as well use it on the window as well. Babe this stuff is like a paste. That's okay. How's it looking? This stuff is thick and not very nice. So that's the visible white frame covered. Just leave it to dry now. It fits perfectly, except for a slight lip there, which I can just take off of the sand or the jigsaw. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Just okay. when you thought you got away from having to do it. Well, guess what guys? It's time for some more closed cell insulation. Adding this closed cell insulation. It's closed cell insulation, but it's closed cell insulation can insulate. It's really easy to do. From closed cell foam, from closed cell foam. And Ben is going nowhere near it this week. We do have some good news. Yes, so... Um, it's not a baby. It's, no, it's not a baby. Yes, somebody uh, reached out to this guy called Phil and said that they have um, space in a storage facility where we can bring our van. Um, it's a lock-up. We can't reverse in. It's not um, enough for our van to go in, but it's like a... It's like a garage. Yeah, it's like a like garage. like a roller-shutter door. Roller-shutter door, um, secured, uh, 24 hour access, absolutely perfect power power um lights yeah so basically yeah. we can reverse up to the like we can literally reverse straight up to the storage thing have our back doors open and if it's raining just be kind of in and out that way exactly it's and gonna be perfect do you know what? we've struggled to find somewhere where we can get like um a high top a high top storage or somewhere where we can get the van in yeah um so this is the next best thing um and it means we can we don't have to worry about putting, we've got this like this canopy thing. It's like a gazebo that we bought as like a backup, but yeah. I just think if it starts to get stormy and rainy and windy, it's, we're just really gonna struggle. Not so, and also that it's still dark at like three, four o'clock in the yeah. afternoon, and it will be for what, for the next couple of months, say, 
but yeah, so we yeah. can, I can leave my tools there and everything. Uh, we don't have to take stuff out, in and out of the van to go places. So yeah, it's just gonna be a perfect. lot easier. Yeah. So thankfully yes. we have found somewhere to work on the van in the winter months, which is very yeah. exciting because it means that this project can or just Easily keep going, you know, keep yeah, going yeah. quickly. So and it's up; it's just outside of Derby, so it's not far from us. It's anyway, like a so. twenty minutes drive from where we live, which is ideal. Perfect. So yes, yeah, that was our like good news. So we're just tackling one of the more complicated parts of the build in general, which is framing out this bulkhead. Now before we had cladding, um, but I wasn't really keen on how that looked in the end with the stain. Um, so we're going to go for a very lightweight ply lining and then we're probably going to use um, some stick on tiles, which I do quite like the look of. Um, but we're having to deal with the fact that the van doesn't go straight up, it kind of curves up like this. Um, so we're probably going to build out the ply bulkhead in three sections. So we're going to do this bit and then we're going to do this bit and then we're going to do these kind of more complicated pieces on either side separately. You cut an angle down there. And just hope it fits. That should go in, shouldn't it? I know I should be scribing this properly, but it's going to be hidden. So the ply is going to go and join it here. So I don't mind if it's a bit rough in there. There you go. So kind on. of. Just putting those the screws in just to hold it all in place at the moment. And then we'll take it out to like varnish and stuff later. But that goes perfectly up against there. So, it's perfect, isn't it? The rain called off play yesterday, but we're back at it this morning, and we are going to try and get as much of this bulkhead done as we can, yeah. which is very exciting because this is going to make such a difference to how the van looks already. It says there's like 70. <laughs> what did he say? I don't think you want to be promoting Rolf Harris, do you? Yeah. Oh, that was the easy bit. There, so I'm just gonna say to that and I'll just take that. Cut the large sheet we've had so just so it hangs over out the van. The first thing we're gonna do is start to um, cut it so that we can, well, cut it so it's the shape of the van so we can slide it in as close as possible and fix it in. And once we've got that side nicely cut in, because that's the pain in the R side, we'll scribe and cut down here. Perfect. Just a little bit away from the wall, but that's fine because yeah, it's going to secure it in. And this piece, that. Now the tricky bit is, Trying to follow this curve here. Now this is what we made last year. So it should if I put that there and there, that should be should be the curve. So see. How far I got it wrong. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was much, much less stressful than last time. I just wanted to say it is the most beautiful winter's day today. It is like permanent golden hour. The sun is just beaming through the garden. The birds are really lively and chirping today. It's gorgeous looking good. So what I'm going to do is just fix this in here and here just to hold it there then we can offer that bit back up and then I know where we can notch it along then. Yo! In one! Look at that it's gone in! 
then that goes in there. And we're gonna go ourselves a van, done. too bad does it because we'll have edging over it or do you need to take a little bit off there well that has Again. been a very successful couple of days at getting the plywood in so really so bulkhead, pleased with the bulkhead it looks so good and it's just a lot neater and obviously a lot of it is not on display so there's going to be no point cladding all of behind the kitchen and stuff so it's honestly just so much better than what we did last time we would like to get the rest of the bulkhead this top bit finished today but we have an interruption to our plans because little river has cut her paw and yes. um, she cut it a couple of days ago and it's it's still bleeding so i rang the vets and they said we can squeeze you in for today so put it on pause and go and take river to the vets and just yeah. make sure she's okay we think she nicked her her nail isn't it, it looks mm. like she's nicked her nail yeah and it stopped bleeding yesterday but i think she's caught it again today so yeah, i can still it look it looks pretty bad now so we just got back from taking river to the vets and she's absolutely fine she has like nicked underneath her foot next to her nail so that's why we couldn't quite see where it was bleeding from but she's not limping on it or anything. I just wanted to make sure she'd not like snagged a nail off or something. But yeah, she's absolutely fine. I think we're gonna call it a day on the van. Ben has done such an incredible job of the bulkhead. Like it's, I would say what, about 70, 80% of the way there. It's just the two little top panels to do. So much quicker and easier using ply this time than it was using cladding originally but we're very happy with how it's looking um, and yeah we think we're gonna try and finish that tomorrow and just call it a night for tonight the weather is not playing ball today it is very rainy which means that cutting those big sheets of plywood to finish ply lining the van is probably not going to happen today Ben is currently fitting the little window, I think. And I thought I'd give you like a little insight into some of the planning that we're doing because it is a logistical nightmare <laughs> to try and organize getting to Cape Town. Um, but I'm doing it in pieces and I'm doing it step by step. And in January, I'll be arranging the carne and the shipping, like as in like finalizing it and getting that paid for. And I'll go into more details about these things at that time. But one of the main things that we're trying to do at the minute is really just nail down a definitive route. So two things that I couldn't be without for this trip are roadmaps of the countries we're traveling through, in this case it's Egypt, and a guidebook. I love the Lonely Planet guidebooks. I just love how in-depth they are. I just, I just don't think you can beat them. They're just such amazing insights into the country that you're gonna to travel to. And what I particularly love is how it divides the country into kind of different sections. So you kind of, rather than looking at this huge country and being overwhelmed with all of these things to do, you can kind of tackle it section by section. But that's not to say that I'm using these books to kind of like plan every step of the, of the route or to not allow any kind of room for flexibility. It's really just to get an understanding of the country and of the layout and of the landscapes. For example, I, find, I found out that the North Nile Valley, which is kind of like the north of Cairo, is very industrial, very built up. There isn't really very much to go and see. Not many people go and visit and it just probably isn't worth our time. Um, and with a trip like this, we haven't got the luxury of just roaming around and taking our time exploring each little area. And obviously some areas are not very safe. So this is just a great way of getting an, an, an understanding of where the main sites are, what the beautiful landscapes are that you wanna go and see. As I'm reading through the guidebook, I will star on Google Maps any places that I think are particularly cool, particularly interesting, things that look amazing, things that we'd love to go and see. Um, and then once I've got them on my Google Maps, a kind of route starts to form because you start to see clusters of the things that you want to go and see, which leads me to the road maps. Egypt isn't so bad. I've bought two maps for Egypt, so I'm sure there were some more. Um, this one I absolutely love. It's the National Geographic Adventure Travel Map. So much detail, really informative, loads of points of interest. 
It's just a really, really good map. But it's such a shame that they don't have these for every single country. But Egypt has been okay to plan our route through. But when it comes to a country like Sudan, which isn't known for its tourism, has been a little bit trickier. Um, I can only find one roadmap for Sudan, which was, I don't even know what brand it is. It just says international travel maps. And it's this, and I don't think this is very up to date because it doesn't recognize South Sudan as a separate country. And I'm pretty sure South Sudan got independence in maybe 2011. So I'm not gonna be using this map. I did manage to find a Sudan guidebook. It's a BRAC guidebook, Lonely Planet Don't Do One. Um, and this is written by a couple who I think have got businesses in Sudan. Um, it does actually say, yeah, Sophie Ibbotson and Max Lovell Haware. I've also written Brat Guides to South Sudan, which is crazy because I'm pretty sure that you shouldn't definitely not travel there. I don't need to think this is over planning. This isn't to create an itinerary day by day of what we're doing. It's more just to make sure that we don't miss anything important and that we're just driving through the right areas and we've got a good understanding of the countries that we're going to. Okay, so just to give you a bit of an insight into the roadmaps. So as well as using the guidebooks, I obviously check government advisories and um, overlanding websites about what areas are safe to travel through and which ones aren't. So I know, for example, with Egypt, we are avoiding the Western Desert, which is kind of anything that kind of borders with Libya. There's a lot of weapons smuggling there and it's just generally completely off limits. I'm pretty sure there's a road through here as well, which is completely closed off. So I know that we're not going to be heading off in this direction. But I also know that the Sinai Peninsula, which is this region of Egypt, which borders Israel and is where you can find Sharm El Sheikh and a lot of the Red Sea resorts and stuff, that has got a problem with ISIS and that is generally seen as off limits as well. However, there is what I would call like a green section, which is kind of like through here, which is seen as safe to travel through. The distances in Africa are really hard to get your head around, especially if you're from Europe. You think, oh, it's a part of the same country, so it's right next to each other. These distances like these are so, so far away. So we should be fine going through here. So if you want me to go into more detail about the exact route we're taking, um, just let me know. But that's generally kind of like how I'm getting my head around the planning of what we're doing. This is definitely my forte. Ben would absolutely hate to do this, but um, I absolutely love it. It's just um, takes a bit of the fear out of it because you really feel like you know what you're doing. So I hope that's given you some of an insight into the planning. If you want to do more segments like this um, as I go through the different countries, just let me know. I don't know how useful or interesting this is for people who are not doing an Africa trip. Um, but obviously it isn't just your bog standard look on TripAdvisor kind of planning. But it's all very exciting and um, if anybody has any questions about any of this kind of stuff, just let me know, send me a message wherever you want on YouTube comments or on Instagram or an email. But yeah, hopefully by now Ben might finish the window frame. How's Hello. The, how's the window looking? Yeah, it looks really good. Come on in, come on in. It sits beautifully in there. Perfectly in. <laughs> Beautiful. So I think we're pretty much happy with how far we've got this week. Yeah. We've only had a couple of days to do what we needed to do. Yeah. Um, it already looks so, so good with the ply yeah. on the bulkhead and then we managed to get the windows framed. Exactly, it's just these small changes just make such a difference. Um, yeah. But yeah, and so. obviously it all kicks off like full steam in January when we get a little workshop to work from and we can just go full pelt into the rebuild. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we'll be able to pick everything up that we'd ordered and we can make a yeah, full steam ahead on cutting holes in the side of the vans to get like gas inlets, water inlets, electric hookup stuff. So we've decided that this is going to be our last video of the year. We are going to take a couple of weeks break over yep. Christmas and New Year. Just want to say a big thank you to everyone that has watched and supported us over this past year. It's been a year of ups and downs, yeah. hasn't it? It's been well, yeah, so it's been phenomenal support from everyone. And yeah, yeah. as I said, it's been some highs, some really lows, yeah. uh, but next year is going to be very exciting. Isn't yeah, it? Next we have year. got a busy year ahead. So we're going to take yeah. this time just to rest spend time with our family and friends and then yeah and see, plan, see, plan that bloody africa trip. <laughs> see what next yeah. year brings because it's yeah gonna be an interesting one for sure yeah. so i hope you guys have an amazing christmas and new year wherever you are and um yeah. we look forward to seeing you all again in january yeah. okay see you then bye guys bye two seconds river <laughs> We're worried about River slipping on the mud and she's banged her hip a bit.
So I said to Jess, be careful with River, just see if she runs, and then she just went and fell over in the exact same place. It's so much to be when we're all just sticking inside. So work it out, stick it out, work it out. Oh.